Hello everyone! Kumusta kayong lahat? And welcome back to our channel! Yay! Sana po ay nasa mabuti kayong lahat na kalagayan today. And yes, we are now on to objective 6 of our RPM serie for proficient teachers. Nakakatawa naman. This is the last objective para sa ating um, classroom observation for the third quarter. Pagkatapos po nito, magbibigay ako ng tips on how to make your lesson plan for the third quarter classroom observation. So, watch out for that. Anyway, let us start our video katulad ng dati sa ating mga pa-shoutout. Mabilis lang to. Bibilisan lang natin, okay? So, I'd like to start with Ma'am Lerma Soriano. Ayan, sabi niya, Teacher Rocky, pahingi po ako ng major assessment form. Thank you po. Sana nabigyan na kita, ano? Uh, anyway, another one from her. Kalago mo po sa buhok mo, Teacher Rocky. Maraming salamat po sa mga informative videos. Hindi ko masyadong alam ko ano ibig sabihin ng kalago. Pero maganda pakinggan. Kaya, thank you po. Maraming salamat. Next one, pa-shout out po mga teachers, masisipag na teachers from Makapagal Village Elementary School at magandang senior high, si, ah, magandang school head, Ma'am Tere. More power po sa inyo, Teacher Rocky. Ayan. Hello po sa lahat ng mga teachers, masisipag na teachers ng Makapagal Village Elementary School and sa inyong magandang school head na si Ma'am Tere. Hello po. Happy viewing to all of you. Another one from Ma'am Euphemia Dolores. Buenas tardes, Teacher Rocky. See you in the next serie. Tsaba, kano pala ang wika namin dito sa Zamboanga City? Hello po sa lahat ng mga teachers sa Zamboanga City. And we also have from Ma'am Maria Fe Gonzalez. Sana po ay may pang empty rin, Teacher Rocky. Yes, magkakaroon din po tayo ng RPM Serie na pang highly proficient. At tatapusin lang natin itong pang proficient, Teacher Rocky. Pasensya na hindi kaya pagsabay-sabay ni Teacher Rocky. Ano? Next one, another one from her po. Hello again, Teacher Rocky. Thank you po talaga. Tatapusin ko po itong serye mo. Sana po yung huwag manawa sa pagbabahagi ng inyong talent, time and effort. God bless you. Thank you so much po. Hanggat kaya po natin. Hindi po natin yan titigilan. Next one from Ma Mayra Manogid. Ay, ay, ay. Lalong gumaganda ang Miss RPMS serye. Truly, bagay talaga sa iyo ang pakulot. Ayan na nga, alam niyo naman ako eh, very funny eh. Very funny walain ako eh. Ayan, naniniwala na ako ng unti-unti. Thank you po. And we also have from Ma'am Elisa Mijares. Thank you so much, Teacher Rocky. Napakalaking tulong po sa mga guro. Shout out po sa mga teacher ng Halay Hain Elementary School, Siniloan, Laguna. Ayan, kapitbahay lang namin to sa ano, sa Pililya, sa... Ahale, akala mo, ahale hain elementary school ng Pilili eh. From Siniluan, Laguna pala. Hello po sa lahat ng mga teachers ng Hale hain elementary school, Siniluan, Laguna. Hello po sa inyong lahat. We have another one from her. Hello, Teacher Rocky. Thank you so much po for uploading video. Great help for teachers. Pa-shout out po sa mga teachers ng Siniluan, Laguna. Ayan, inulit. Hi, hello. Magandang araw po sa lahat ng mga teachers from Siniluan, Laguna. Ang aming kapit Bahay. Thank you. And we have from Blimwell. Thank you po. You're welcome. And from Ma'am Grace Irene Rebuyas. Morning, Teacher Rocky. Hello, Ma'am. Kumusta ka na? From Sir Jose Brazil Vencito. Thanks po again, Teacher Rocky. Laking tulong po ito sa amin. Very clear explanation. More blessings po. Thank you so much. And from Ma'am Cecilia Puertoliano. Thank you. Thank you din po, Ma'am. Kamusta ka na po? And from Ma'am Bernadette Irma Caballa. Heart, heart, heart. Hello po, Teacher Rocky. Thank you po for the free template. Close na po tayo. Very accommodating po kayo sa Messenger Chat. Thank you po for your patience. Don't worry about that. Handa po akong tumulong. And thank you for appreciating that effort. Maraming salamat po. And yes, Close na po tayo. Actually, noong una pong RPMS, close na tayo, ma'am, di ba? 
Next one from Ma'am from Ma Jupina Saure. Good day, Teacher Rocky. Thank you for sharing your insights, Ma'am. You're welcome po. And thank you so much for always watching our videos and following our videos. And with that, we are now ready to move on to our objective number six of the RPMS area for proficient teachers for school year 2022 to 2023. So let us continue discussing the RPMS tool for teacher one to three or proficient teachers for school year 2022 to 2023. This is still according to the DepEd Memorandum 008 series of 2023. And for this video, we're going to discuss about objective number six, use differentiated developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. So for this objective, unlike objective number five, this objective should reflect on our uh, lesson plan. This should be seen on our lesson and plan how we craft uh, different activities that would address the differences of our learners according to their gender needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. Now, this objective is under KRA2, Learning Environment and Diversity of Learners. Let me uh, remind you again that for this, uh, according to these guidelines, for school year 2022 to 2023, we are only required two classroom observations, and that is for the third quarter and fourth quarter of this school year. Therefore, this um, classroom, this objective number six falls under the classroom observable indicator number six, which will only be observed and rated during our third quarter classroom observation. And it is our last classroom observable indicators to be rated for the third quarter. So our um, means of verification would only uh, show one rating sheet or inter-observer agreement form depends on how many observers sit on your classroom observation. So for this uh, objective, that is a classroom observable indicator number six, use differentiated developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences, we are always aiming to get the highest possible score on our rating sheet or the inter-observer agreement form. Now, let us look back to the RPMS tool for objective number six. So this objective should show both on our lesson plan and on our uh, classroom lesson execution. So we should be able to use differentiated uh, and developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. So how are we going to achieve the highest possible score? We can be guided by the PPST 3.1.2, and we can take that from the notes below the RPMS tool. PPST Resource Package Module 6 offers illustrative and instructive information that can help readies achieve the objective. So this is what's going to help us achieve the objective and achieve the highest possible score. So for this objective, we are going to make use of the PPST resource package module 6, and this will be the content of our discussion for this video. That will be under module 6, use differentiated developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. And again, I would like to uh, remind you that these PPST resource packages are downloadable from the internet. So I suggest that you download each of these modules to help us on our uh, classroom observation or on, our, on the completion of our RPMS portfolio. So as teachers, we are expected to meet the needs and strengths of learners with different backgrounds in order to provide effective and developmentally appropriate instruction. We also need to take into account various factors to highly engage learners in daily classroom instruction. It is very important that we as a teacher would be able to motivate and engage our learners to different activities according to their differences or according to the diversity. For that, let us study the following key concepts that will help us uh, as we discuss objective number six. Differentiated teaching strategies. So what are these? These refer to the approaches or tactical procedure used to reach a goal involving a wide variety of texts, tasks, processes, and products suited to the various learning needs of diverse range of students. In other words, these could be the activities, the different parts of our lesson execution, which involves addressing our students' uh, different needs. 
Learner's gender. This refers to the social attributes and opportunities associated with being male and female and the relationships between women and men and girls and boys, as well as the relationships between women and those between men. These attributes, opportunities, and relationships are socially constructed and learned through socialization processes. That is according to Dep and Order Number 32, Series of 2017. Another one, learner's need. These are observable gaps between a learner's present knowledge or competence and the curriculum standards identified as necessary for the grade level. So our student, students' need are those that come between their uh, existing knowledge and what is required of them according to the curriculum standards. Another one, we have learner's strengths. These are pre-existing knowledge or competence that helps a learner meet required standards. So the learner strengths are what they previously acquired, what they already have. Learners' interests, on the other hand, these are learners' personal preferences, likes or dislikes, which must be considered in the teaching learning process. So uh, during our teaching learning process, we should always take into consideration the interests, the likes or dislikes of our learners. And last one, the learner's experiences. These refer to skill or knowledge that a learner gets from doing something. So with that, we are now ready to take the different examples and illust illustration practices for this objective. One of these is uh, teacher Grace. Teacher Grace is a second grade education sa pagpapakatao, ESP or Values Education Teacher. In the excerpt, daily lesson plan, she prepares a small group activity. So let us take a look at the excerpt from her lesson plan. So this is one a part of her lesson plan wherein she uh, managed to, to let her students uh, do this small group activity wherein she divided the class into three and gave each one different task card. So group one, i arte natin, were asked to create a uh, role playing. Group two, i guhit natin, were asked to draw according to their task card. And the last one, magrap tayo, this group were asked to create a song, chant, or poem according to their task card. So the note for this task, Teacher Grace groups the learners into three. Group one, i-arte natin, let's act it out. Group two, i-guhit natin, let's draw it. And group three, mag tayo, let's wrap. This grouping is based on the strengths and interests of the learners. Now let us analyze this activity that was provided by Teacher Grace on her class by answering these following questions. Let You try to answer this in your uh, mind. Number one, what kind of activities were given by Teacher Grace? What are these activities? How did she differentiate the activities? Number two, did the activity correspond to learner's diversity? Why or why not? Was Teacher Grace able to use the differentiated teaching strategies to suit the learner's gender, needs, trends, interests, and experiences? If yes, can you cite some? And last one, if you were to enrich the same activity, how would you ensure that learner's diversity is addressed? As shown in the excerpt, Teacher Grace provided a small group activity for her learners in Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao based on their strengths and interests. These attempts to differentiate this differentiation can also be done in other aspects of the lesson such as content, process, product, and learning environment. So we are not limited on one activity alone. Differentiation means tailoring instruction to meet individual needs. Whether teachers differentiate content, process, product, or the learning environment, the use of ongoing assessment and flexible grouping makes this a successful approach to instruction. At its most basic level, differentiation consists of the efforts of teachers to respond to variance among learners in the classroom. Whenever a teacher reaches out to an individual or small group to vary his or her teaching in order to create the best learning experience possible, that teacher is differentiating instruction. Now, teachers can differentiate at least four classroom elements based on student readiness, interest, or learning profile. The content, we can do differentiation to the content of our lesson. So what the student needs to learn or how the student will get access to the information. The process, these are activities in which the student engages in order to make sense of or master the content. The product, these are culminating projects that asks the student to rehearse, apply, and extend what he or she has learned in a unit. And the learning environment, which is the way the classroom works and feels. Now, these are different illustrations of practices which may guide us in crafting our own lesson plan and executing our uh, classroom observation.
Creating a diverse classroom and maintaining a positive learning climate are both a challenge and an opportunity. It is a challenge because the moment you start conceptualizing the lesson, you begin to ask yourself how to develop a sense of belongingness among your students. It is also an opportunity for you to think out of the box and view learners with different backgrounds, sets of experiences, cultural context, and capabilities, thus establishing an inclusive classroom. In this module, we will show you how you can use differentiated, developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences through lesson exemplars, instructional materials, and assessment tools and strategies. Are you ready? In this section, you will see different instances that illustrate how differentiated teaching strategies are utilized to suit learners' gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. Fellow teacher, the principle one size fits all does not apply in our instruction and is retroactive for our students. The key for meaningful learning at any level and across learning areas is differentiated instruction. In the context of education, differentiation is defined as a teacher's reacting responsibly to a learner's need. Because we have a diversity or diverse learners, we as a teacher should be able to adapt to their differences by providing them differentiated instruction. We have presented here some illustrative examples of differentiation for you to explore. Illustration of practice number one, differentiated instruction based on learner's interest. So we can differentiate our instruction according to the interest of our learners. Here is an example. Teacher Angel is a seventh grade science teacher. The classes she handles are heterogeneous. That is, she handles diverse learners in the classroom, which is a uh, I mean, all of us or most of us are handling this kind of class. Let us try to explore the differentiated teaching strategy she used to teach learning competency, investigate properties of unsaturated or saturated solutions. So this is part or one of the activities that Teacher Angel uh, did on this lesson. The teacher angel decided to unpack the learning competency by teaching the properties of unsaturated solutions first, instead of teaching both types the same day. So she used cubing strategy in her lesson by requiring the learners to look at the topic from six different angles. So provided it's a topic, uh, that's the unsaturated solution, and the teacher was able to provide or distribute. Then she divided the class into groups according to their readiness to study the samples of unsaturated solution from different angles. And using the samples of unsaturated solution as the topic, she asked the students the following. So the cubing strategy is that she makes use of a cube and assign question on each, uh, on each face of the cube. So each member shall roll the cube and answer the question based on the cube. So one face would uh, be assigned to one question that is describe it, compare it, associate it, analyze it, apply it, and then argue for or against it. So therefore, what the students would do is to roll the dice and whatever that comes out would be their task. Teacher Angel uses cubing as differentiated strategy that is based on learner's interest and readiness. The groups were based on the readiness level since the cubing perspectives begin at the least complex level and become increasingly complex. So it begins with describe it, that is least complex, until it comes to uh, analyzing, application, and then argumentation. Meanwhile, the presentation of the output is based on their interest. The visual cube serves as a starting point for the students to analyze or consider various aspects of unsaturated solution. This strategy allows students to think critically about the topic. When students work with cubes, they apply information in new ways. Cubes can be differentiated by interest and readiness, that is according to Pressler of 2016. Now, this is illustration practice number two, differentiated instruction based on learner's gender. Let us take a look at teacher Maynard, a grade 3 science teacher, considers his learner's diversity in teaching. In his instruction of the competency uh, S3LT-2A-P-2 enumerate helpful habits to protect the sense organs, he provides freedom among his pupils to choose the mode of their performance as reflected in his... So this was his activity. Below our performance task, choose one which you can definitely do. So in a blank, that is choosing one uh, uh, activity or one task from the table, present the different healthy habits to protect your sense organ. So the, the children, the students were uh, asked to choose which of these activities can they do the best. 
After, each will look for classmates who choose the same task and form a group. From the illustration, teacher Maynard differentiates teaching through flexible grouping. He groups the class in such a way that it respects the learner's diversity. It breaks the rigid conventional gender-based groupings of learners, all boys or all girls. His technique respects all learners because it considers their preferences. Similarly, differentiation is evident in the delivery of the teaching process. For the learning activities, he offers a variety of performance tasks reflective of the learner's interest. He provides the pupils the opportunity to do what they want and relate it to what they are learning. This makes learning more meaningful and purposeful. So the first part, how uh, did teacher Maynard uh, do this part, adapting flexible grouping? Number one, plan student working arrangement, depending on the learner's needs. You may adapt whole class, small group, or individualized activities. And the number two, allow your students with mixed strength and readiness or learning patterns to work together. So that is what teacher Maynard did. So she, uh, teacher Maynard allows his students to choose what tasks they want to do or what tasks they can do best. And then afterwards, he allows the students to look for other classmates that, uh, that have the same interests. And then they ask them to work together as a group. The second part, how do we do it? Differentiating the teaching process. Number one, identify the learning goals. Number two, provide varied options of learning activities considering the learner's interests and abilities. So what teacher Maynard did is he identified the learning goals. The, the learning goals was to uh, be able to uh, use uh, the, appreciate the health organs. So uh, through that learning goals, he was able to develop uh, an activity that is varied among his students, among uh, depending on her on his learners' interests and abilities. Now let us go to differentiate uh, illustration of practice number three: differentiated instruction based on learners' experiences. Teacher Arwin, a fourth grade English teacher, develops learning tasks on the competency EN four WC dash two B twenty seven. Write or compose a news story. After explicitly teaching the structure and language feature of news stories, he tells his students to write a sample news story with the following prompt. The task, write a news report about an ev event that happened in your barangay last week. Be guided by the following question. What happened? Who were the event? Where did it happen? When, it, when did it happen? Why did it happen? And how did it happen? So these are kind of activity was uh, able to show the differentiated instruction according to the learner's experiences. So each learner would have the chance to share their own experiences. The illustration of practice clearly demonstrates that teacher Arwin considers the learner's experience in his lesson. Here, the content of the formative assessment is drawn from the learner's experience. Hence, it becomes more meaningful for the learners. Instead of isolated events as the topic for the writing activity, the teacher provides a common and familiar topic for the learners to work on. Differentiation enables teachers to adopt one or more of the curricular, curricular elements, the content, process, and products, based on one or more of the student characteristics, the readiness, interest, and learning profile, at any point in a lesson or unit. However, you need not differentiate all elements in all possible ways. Modify a curricular element only when one, you see a student need, and two, you are convinced that modification increases the likelihood that the learner will understand important ideas. And so let us go to illustration of practice number four, differentiated instruction based on learners' needs and readiness. Teacher Philomena is a sixth grade mathematics teacher handling heterogeneous classes. She decides to use tiered strategy in teaching graphs to learners with varying needs and readiness. Below is a transcript of the tiered instruction. So this is part of uh, teacher Philomena's uh, lesson plan. The topic is about graph, and uh, she also has there the objective of the lesson and the activity, the sequence of events. So for the pre-assessment, uh, draw a visual representation of the number of different colors represented in our classmates' clothing. So she asked the students to draw a visual representation, a graphical representation of how many number of different colors are represented by the classmates' clothing. So as she uh, goes on with the activity, she divides students into readiness-based groups. That is blue, red, and green. So the blue are the, are the students who demonstrate sophistication with the skill even utilizing graphing skills or multiple representation. So in the pre-assessment na pinagawa niya, there, there were students who were able to show that they have demonstrated sophistication with the skill. So 
they were put into blue team. Well, the red team, these are the students who have a handle on representing numbers visually, but lack fluency and sophistication. So they know about, they know how to do it, but they still need more skills to be able to, uh, to practice it and uh, more capable of doing it. And the, and teacher Philomena put them in the red team. And then we also have the green team. These are the students who struggle to depict data visually. So these are the students who does not have, who do not have that much uh, knowledge about the topic. So these groups were given different tasks according to their um, readiness. Teacher Philomena is able to cover what the learners know and understand about graphs, including its application. She bears in mind the readiness and needs of the learners in his tiered instruction. So when teachers tier assignments, they make slight adjustments within the same lesson to meet the needs of students because you will have to uh, you will have to be able to analyze and identify the needs of your students according to the lesson. All students learn the same fundamental skills and concepts, but through varying modes and activities. The tiers appropriately challenge students at their ability levels. The tiers the teacher's challenge is to make sure all tasks, regardless of the tier level, are interesting, engaging, and challenging. That's according to Tomlinson of 1999. Now, how do we do it? Number one, identify key concepts, skills, and essential understandings that you want all students to achieve. These elements become the basis for your own level task. Next one, identify how you will cluster groups or activities. Although you can create multiple levels of tiers, keep the number of levels consistent with your group of students. So you have to know what kind of students you have and how they are group. How many group would you have in your class? Don't make three tiers if only two groups of students exist in your classroom. Those students who are working at grade level and those students who are struggling, for example. And the number three, select elements, select elements to tier. Number four, create your own level tier. Next, design a similar task for struggling learners. The task should make adjustments based on student readiness. And last one, if needed, develop a third, more advanced activity for learners who have already mastered the basic standard or competency being addressed. Make sure the task actually requires higher level thinking than the on level task. The advanced tier sh shouldn't just be more of the same thing. So you might also consider the following ways to tier a lesson. So we have the tier by challenge level, tier by complexity, tier by resources, tier by process, or tier by product. Now these different examples of ways to tier a lesson can be found on the internet. It is, we are very lucky that we can find a lot of examples, example activities according to these different ways to tier a lesson. Let us just be uh, adventurous and be exploratory in finding out different examples that we can apply on our lesson. These are another examples of a different differentiated instructions that we can make use on our uh, lesson. The anchor activities. These are tasks for stud students to work on independently after assigned work is completed at a high level of quality. We can also make use of the centers. Areas, these are areas in the classroom containing collections of activities and or materials designed to reinforce or to extend certain skills. So we might want to put up centers on our, in our classroom so that this, uh, this point, uh, this area in our classroom, we can provide activities or other materials for reinforcement or extending certain skills or concepts to motivate students to explore more about the topic. The choice board, students select from assignments that are placed in pockets and change as necessary. So we can give them different choices to what activities they would want to do or they have interests of. Compacting, a three-stage process where teachers assess students prior to teaching a unit or skill to determine what the student does, no, does not know, and what alternate experiences will replace those activities already mastered. Flexible grouping, temporarily grouping students by interest. So you can ask the students what interest them more and group them together according to their interests. Group investigations. Students are introduced to topics related to something being studied in class and grouped by interest. Jigsaw. A cooperative strategy where students work with peers who study one fact of a topic and then return to a home-based group for sharing what they have learned. So you ask the students, uh, you group of your students and ask them to study about one topic and then they group again into one to discuss the topic that they have uh, studied 
to share it to other uh, group. Learning contracts, a negotiated agreement between teacher and student, which gives students freedom in acquiring knowledge and skills, provides for student choice, delineates working conditions, and establishes what information will be learned and how it will be shared. So the learning contract is an agreement. You, you agree, both the teachers and students agree, that uh, these are the tasks that they should be uh, doing, and this is the outcome that they're expected to do, and let the students decide on how they're going to do it according to their knowledge and skills. Stations, different spots in the classroom where students work with various tasks simultaneously, which are linked by a set of concepts and skills. Socratic seminar, a discussion format where students share with each other their thoughts on a particular piece from literature, history, current events, issues, or hypothetical situation. The tic-tac-toe, a menu or options arranged in a three-by-three block grid. The tiered assignments, Change, changing the depth or complexity of a lesson to create multiple levels of tasks and assigning students to a level according to their readiness. And then the web quest, a teacher designed an internet lesson developed with specific learning goals in mind, some specified and relevant internet links and guidelines that support students in the research or inquiry process. So having seen how indicator 3.1.2 can be achieved, you are now ready to develop lesson plans, instructional materials, and assessment tools applicable to your teaching context. Now these are the different key concepts that we might take into consideration in applying different activities in our uh, lesson. So the gender, how do we address the gender? The, te the teacher initiates learning experiences that are equitable for all learners regardless of their gender. So the teacher does not show preference for any group over the other. For example, the teacher does not say that female learners are working better than male learners. What about the needs? This is where the teacher integrates into the lessons activities that promote the emotional well-being of the learner. We should take into consideration the emotional well-being of our learners in creating or crafting different activities of, uh, in our lesson. So, another one is the strength. The teacher provides activities that help learners celebrate their strengths. So, the teacher can use prompts such as, I was proud of myself, when I, or the things I am good at are. And then the interest, the teacher provides varied opportunities for learners to express and pursue their individual interests. He or she offers choices on how learners can accomplish tasks according to their interests. For example, in a music class, a teacher can assign learners to interpret a song by creating a relevant artwork, presenting an interpretative dance, or composing different lyrics or reporting on the background of the song. So that is addressing to what interests our students. With that, we are now able to produce a very competitive rating sheet. I suppose. So for this objective, classroom observable indicator number six, I hope and I'm sure that we will be getting the highest possible score that is level seven. And don't forget to ask our observer to uh, put on the note whether or not we meet the objective within the allotted time because that would go to our score for efficiency. With that, this is going to be our IPCRF rating computation. So we're only required to uh, provide COT rating sheet one, that is the classroom observation for the third quarter. So if we get seven uh, rating, that is equivalent to five points for the quality. And if we were able to meet the objective on uh, within the allotted time, that gives us five points for efficiency. So with that, we are now ready to transfer this to our RPMS portfolio. So uh, our... RPMS portfolio has now the objective one completed, objective two, it's already complete. We also have objective three completed, four, five, and now we have the objective number six. So ito na yung ating objective number six, MOV with the annotation. Now, we are going to transfer our score to our uh, IPCRF parts 1 to 4, and we are on to objective number 6. We put in our score for COT, uh, from the COT rating sheet for the third quarter classroom observation, and that is 7 points. That will give us equivalent of 5 points in the RPMS scale, and 5 points of under the quality. For the efficiency, let's type in 5 uh, because we were able to meet the objective uh, within the allotted time. That gives us the average of 5 and the score of 0.350, which would automatically reflect on our um, encoding sheet. Ah, I mean, uh, IPCRF Part 1. Ayan na, meron tayong score sa ating IPCRF Part 1. And that would also reflect in the summary sheet of our IPCRF. That's IPCRF Part 1. Four. So, ayan na yung objective 6 natin. Meron na tayong score for objective number 6. Okay. Ayan na nga po ang kabuuan ng ating objective number 6. Sana ay nagdagdagan ng inyong... Uh 
pagkakaunawa para sa objective na ito. Ito po ang ating pang-anim na classroom observable indicators. Ibig sabihin, ito po ang pang-anim ang anim na dapat maipam, maipamalas natin during our classroom observation for the third quarter. Again, next video po natin, I'm going to come up with a summary of the six classroom observable indicators for the uh, third quarter classroom observation and I'm going to show you a sample lesson plan. Abangan nyo po yan. Ginagawa na po natin yan para sa ating next video. Bago po tayo mag-proceed sa susunod na classroom observable indicators Indicator. And again, our free template is still available for you. Kung gusto niyo po mag-request uh, ng ating RPMS portfolio, both for uh, proficient and highly proficient teachers, and uh, the different IPCRF materials, katulad ng IPCRF development plan, um, media review form, we also have the COT rating sheet and COT rate. COT Inter-Observer Agreement form both for uh, proficient and highly proficient teachers and of course our IPCRF part, parts 1 to 4. Ayan, nandiyan yan lahat. All you need to do is to uh, subscribe to this channel, do a screenshot of your subscription and send it to our Facebook page. Dapat po, i-message nyo po ako sa Facebook page na yan. Ano po? At doon po tayo maghuhuntahan sa messenger. Thank you so much po and I'll see you again in our next video. God bless everyone. Keep safe and happy.